a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. I have a question for you. Are you wondering what your next move is in business? Are you feeling like you should be doing something, you should be making a change, or you know that there is a change that you need to make, but you're not sure how to do it, how to strategize for it, how to plan for it, how to, how to break through the weeds, right? I know that feeling. I've been there. But I have two solutions for you today. The first is my guest, Jane Stoller. Jane is the founder of Organizing for Your Lifestyle. She is a structure strategist, and she believes that custom organized systems and routines ultimately enhance our work and our life, with the result being reduced stress, increased happiness, and increased productivity. Whether you need a quick declutter, assistance with packing for a trip, a new labeling systems, help on learning how to fold the sheets for crying out loud, or a whole business or home makeover, Jane uses a holistic method when she works with her clients. Jane is also the author of the book, Organizing for Your Lifestyle, which we'll talk about today during the show. She also speaks at conferences, seminars, and teaches at a university in Canada. I think you're going to enjoy this conversation. Now, my second solution is to join me on July 28th for a one-day event, the Power Talk Friday Tour Las Vegas. Together with my husband, Vin, Sarah Danielli, the CEO of My Doma Studio, Nancy Ganskalfer, business coach extraordinaire, and Mark McDonough, founder of Tastefully Inspired Blog and PR, who is an all-around marketing whiz, all of us are going to help you break down your business, help you break through the walls that are blocking you, and help you make a plan that when you leave, you can put into action. So maybe you're a newer business owner, and you might be thankfully getting pretty busy, and all of a sudden, you know, a good amount of clients in the, pl- in the pipeline, but maybe you're thinking, uh-oh, this train is moving very fast, and I'm becoming very afraid that I'm going to drop the ball. How am I going to handle all of this responsibility? right? Or maybe you're more seasoned and you're ready to scale, ready to hire, but you're afraid that maybe your systems aren't really locked down. And how, what happens when you hire and they come in and they work for you? Is everybody just going to look around at each other and get nothing done? Or maybe you're ready to hire. Maybe you've got some systems, but you're not sure if you can afford to do that. And you're not sure how to analyze your finances in order to make a safe decision. Whatever it is, you need answers real ones based on your circumstances. So the podcast talks about big ideas, the the concepts, but sometimes you need someone to really answer your specific question. Okay. That's what we're here to do. Join us. It is specifically going to be small so that we can actually work with you in a meaningful way. And I'm just going to say this point blank. This is not a setup to buy more things, more programs, or more courses from those of us there at this event with you. No, this is about this day, about being present in this day, about being with you and about you having the opportunity to be with five experienced business people, five entrepreneurs, each with our own superpower, each in a place where we are wanting to share what we know, what we've learned, the journey that we've been on, the mistakes that we've made, and the solutions that we know we've come up with. We want to help you be your best business self. So no, this is not going to be a My Doma Studio commercial. Yes, it's going to be teaching you processes and systems for project management, whether you use My Doma Studio or not. So this is not going to be selling you more coaching programs. No, this is going to be coaching you in real time. And this is not going to be selling you PR or a system or a 
you know, whatever it is. No, this is going to be real time strategies for you to learn how to grow your social media presence, suggestions on specifically your Instagram feed, your Facebook feed. Okay. So are we clear on that? This is not come here for a little bit and let's all sell you more. No, this is small, intimate, open, jam-packed, and meaningful. And I want to say that this event is proudly sponsored by Revel Woods, by the International Window Coverings Expo, by My Doma Studio, and Designer Inc. These are forward-thinking companies that believe in you, that believe in your ability to grow, your ability to be profitable. And I thank them for this belief. And together with these sponsors and these coaches, I invite you to transform your business. I invite you to join us for one highly productive day. The bonus stay the weekend for Las Vegas market. See everything, all the showrooms. Join me at Kravit on Monday for a party and a book signing. Or you also, I'd love for you to join me at Alder and Tweed, where I'll be leading a panel discussion on being an innovator, on being a person willing to be bold, of being being a business owner who sees a need and acts on it. That's the type of people that I'm going to have on this panel discussion. And we're going to be talking about what they've done and what they have taken action on. Okay. So I have one caution for you. Come ready to work, but I have one promise for you. I'll make sure you glad you are glad that you did. All right. Now I am delighted to introduce you to Jane. And I also want to let you know, That in addition to talking with Jane about how to organize your business and your life to maximize your your productivity, Jane also shared some of her journey to entrepreneurship. And I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to relate to this. It's a very truthful couple of moments. And I am grateful that she was open and willing to talk about this with me and therefore with you. I hope you find some hope and some inspiration in this conversation. And I hope to see your face in Las Vegas. I'd love, 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 love to see that aha moment on your face when we help you with that breakthrough. Okay. If you're interested in that, go over to luannnigara.com forward slash Las, L-A-S dash Vegas. Okay. luannnigara.com forward slash Las dash Vegas. Thanks so much. Let me introduce you to Jane. Hi, Jane. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, Luann. Thanks for having me. Jane, I'm excited about our conversation because I'm looking forward to this conversation having the terrific mix of um, three things. I'm going to clarify three things, business, woo-woo, and science. (laughs) (laughs) So what I understand is you have this book and your book is called Organizing for Your Lifestyle. You are... In this first chapter of your book, you explain to us why it's important, what is happening in the science of being organized that goes beyond just looking at the bookshelf, looking pretty and balanced and beautiful. Tell us a little bit about how you work and how your life and your business, when you help organize individuals and businesses, you cross and you do it from this holistic approach. Yeah, that's a great question because um, I wrote the book, Organizing for Your Lifestyle. It took quite a long time, but it was really, I wanted to put my passion on paper and it started with organizing closets. My friends, my family, I would help, I've helped them my whole life. So I thought I'm going to put all my tips and inspiration into a book. And then it evolved to, to a travel chapter because I, I travel quite a lot for my job and, and I'm efficient at it. And then it evolved even more and thought, okay, I need to, there's, you know, organizing goes beyond having my shirts color coordinated, or like you said, your bookshelf organized. It is so much more than that. So I I really started to research kind of um, what I call the science behind organization and why it's important, how it relates to reduce stress, increase productivity, how it affects your daily life, how time management comes into it. So it, the book evolved into kind of a motivational chapter on why people need to get organized. And it's not only a one time I'm going to organize my closet and leave it, but it's creating organizing into your life. So you don't even think about it anymore. It's part of your natural routine. And for myself, um, I, like you mentioned, a holistic approach. I think it's important to take that from your daily life, your morning to your, your business, whether you work for a company or you have your own company. 
and and right back to your your personal life again because it all is a streamlined process. It's interesting because I actually have I I, I understand what you're saying, but I also am the person that that um, I don't know how to describe it because there's some things about me that are are very very organized, and other things you'd look and say, "How sweet Jesus can that woman think over there?" Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and so and it's very funny because. I don't know, as somebody who has studied it, I'm, I'm actually going to indulge now and ask you a question curiously. For instance, my home life is ridiculously organized. So you open the medicine closet, it's a closet, and there are little containers and it says dental and it says sunscreen and it says, you know, first aid and it says mm -hmm. face creams and it says, you know, <laughs> all these things. And it's like, if I want something, you got to just pull that little box out and put it back in. But if you ever went to my desk at Window Works, you'd be like, what crazy mad professor works out of this place? <laughs> and so it's, what is that? Am I just psycho? Am I like a schizophrenic? <laughs> like, do you find that you have clients that have complete dichotomies in the way that they function? Well, you bring up a great point because I worked with somebody actually not in a different way. It was, um, I have to say everybody is different, right? And we all have different lifestyles. So um, for her, when I worked with her, it was kind of an organizing her business. And I always start with her closet. And she's like, well, I don't like to pick up my outfits the night before because I want to have, you know, I want that freedom to be creative in the morning. So I said, <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's, let's talk about that lifestyle and that creativity that you need. Right. So it ended up being that for her, it was actually better to organize for creativity rather than, and you know, picking out, you know, having a bit of a more structured on that, her, her closet structured around that versus, kind of a structured only picking outfits the night before. So it was a bit a bit more challenging for myself, but realizing that everybody's life is different. And it's not it's not a bad thing if um you, you know it's not about the messy desk or it's it's about the system you have when you get to work and you your oh. office. See and I have it, that. I have the messy yeah. desk, but I have a system when I sit down at it. That's interesting. <laughs> exactly. And 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 it's about talking about, okay, how long does it take you to find your files? Is it is there something that is challenging you or bothering you about the system that you have? So kind of digging down into um perhaps the it's not the messy desk that's the issue. It might be you know, this helps you because you have every you know where everything is. There's a system, but maybe we can improve it somehow. Mm. And maybe not. So it, again, it's um, it's a lifestyle because I always say it's not the messy desk that's the problem. It's um, is it causing you to lose time? Is it causing you to lose um, kind of efficiency? That's where it becomes a problem. Okay, that's interesting because my messy desk does not cause me to lose time because I don't sit down and have to do anything. Everything, like you said, that I need is there, and I can sit down and work within what would be an uncomfortable messy desk to somebody else and get up. And, it's almost to me, I always feel like I'm ready to work when I sit down. I don't have to pull everything out and figure out what I'm doing today. Isn't that funny? Right. And yeah. I have to say that I have often thought that everybody that listens to the show knows that my husband is the systems Nazi, right? That he, our <laughs> entire business is highly structured. And as a matter of fact, it's interesting because we hired a new salesperson a year ago and he's um, been working for us, and he was our rep, Brenda rep for the awning products that we sell. And so he knew our company for 10 years, and he came in and serviced us. And of course, he serviced uh, the entire Northeast region of companies like ours. And he chose to work for us. Obviously, he had regard for us. We chased him for many, many years to try and convince him to work for us, and um, finally won. But he just said at a meeting about two weeks ago, this place is the most tight run business I have ever come across. And wow. we all looked at each other. And of course, we know that we're highly systemized, but we also see every place every day where something breaks down. So we mm -hmm. all will look and go for crying out loud. We missed that step and that caused that problem, right? Yeah. So I have to say, I've often thought that my innate personality truly likes to be organized, which is why my home is organized. My business personality needs to be organized, which is, and I goes along with my husband and, you know, ingrained it in, but there's this rebel in me that just has to, in the space where I work, say, I'm not following every rule, you guys, just letting you know. <laughs> 
And you know, that's it, 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 organizing shouldn't change your life. It shouldn't change who you are, right? So right. I, um, maybe like we're digging down a bit deep here. but maybe Psychology. Is, I told you yeah. it's going to be woo-woo, Jane. I told you. <laughs> and you know, if, if it was getting to the point where, you know, it, a lot of people with their messy desks, it leads to, you know, when they sit down, they see these different piles and they attack uh, little bits of everyone, which is losing time efficiency. So then right. it creates a problem. Right, right. So again, right. if it's you need to make your system or your your life work for your mm. your lifestyle. I do hit the moment every once in a while, but I have to say, sometimes I have to in the back of my mind, I think you're just stalling. So every once in a while, it might be every two months or something, I will come in. I will have a particularly heavy workload to do, and I will find myself completely organizing my desk and putting things. Away way that I don't need and clearing the space. And on one hand, the little devil on one shoulder is saying, <laughs> you know, you're just doing this because you don't want to dig in. But then the other devil on the other shoulder, I don't think there's any angels. I think there's just two devils. The other devil says, no, this is good to do. You'll be more productive when you clean this up. So <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. could spin anything is really what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. So talk to us about it. It is, you know, I'm making a joke and I'm making light and I'm sharing my personal experience with this, but I do believe what you are saying that there is a connection, an innate inside connection to having things well set up and under control so that you can feel just the master of your universe, whether it is your closet, it is your office, it is your car, whatever it is, it, it gives you a sense of control, right? Exactly. And, um, and beyond that control too, a lot of times I say, okay, what is your, your challenge? Everyone says, I'm so disorganized. I need help. I said, okay, let's drill down to what the challenge is. Is it, you feel like you don't have enough time. And usually that's the, the, the kickers. Yes. I want more time in my life. Who doesn't? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so usually it's okay. Where are you losing that time looking for things? Or is it because you're checking your email five times in one hour? What, what is that, um, connection to organization? So I try and again, drill down to, um, to, to their current system and, and what's most, what is a priority in a day and why are they not getting to those priorities? Okay. And when you work with companies and individuals, you, you do this both for people in their personal life. You do this for solopreneurs, for their business life. You do it for larger organizations, for their businesses. You are tackling it from both sides. You are able to help them organize their exterior environment, but you're also are taking time and are capable and sometimes do take time to help them organize their processes of actually running their business. Yeah. It's a very unique perspective. Yes, I have. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's, that's what I'm saying. It's unusual yeah. to somebody do both. Somebody usually yep. does the outside and a whole different qualified professional does the inside. So tell us about that, Jane. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very good point you brought up because uh, my passion is really organizing, began with organizing things when I was young and then closets and then houses and, and items, right? And then um, it evolved. I, I'm, I worked in the corporate world for 10 years and my last, for the last four years, I worked in a role which was internal consulting role on projects centered around kind of organizational structure, organizational efficiency, performance improvement, kind of globally. So it it brought this different perspective um, into how to run businesses, both small and, and large, mostly in the construction industry, but um, apl applicable to many industries. So it kind of, I always related organizational and organizing into all of my projects and, um, and realized they're, they're really interrelated. So I, the experience I gained from that, I, I use now with my clients. So a lot of my projects have been to um, previous customers and, and colleagues where they have small businesses or, or large corporations that you know, they're losing time within their organizational structure, their people, if they're in um, certain roles, you know, maybe sales roles or teams, making sure they're the most efficient. So for myself, it all leads back to organizing, but um, perhaps on different levels. It's not just organizing the aesthetics, which I still love doing, and that's my passion, and I think it still is important to bring into the, the, the system, but um, on a different level, also the, the business organizing, I have the experience and I, I enjoy doing that as well. Mm. It's interesting because in my brain, I'm thinking you can, you can help a company come up with all the different processes and the folders, one that leads this step goes to that step. And then you also have the uh, ability and passion of like, let's pick pretty folders and let's make it yeah, exactly. look good. <laughs> And I, I find men and women, if you can bring something that they like into it, mm -hmm. like you said, pretty, um, 
Um, or, you know, for men, something that's simple and easy and, and they'll use it and make it a bit fun that they don't even realize they're organizing, but they're, it, they're just making it into the part of their life and, mm. and they're having fun doing it. Hopefully they'll keep that system and it'll be sustainable. Right, 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 right. What happens when you are working with somebody? Are there, are there particular pitfalls or markers or typical challenges that you see over and over again that we could pay, possibly relate to or learn a lesson from? Yeah, there, um, I don't know where to start with that. <laughs> <laughs> but for the most people, it's um, uh, on a personal level, they say, oh, I could really use your help in, in organizing you know, my life or my business. Everybody comes to me and says, oh, I wish I could be more organized. That's everybody's um, everybody's kind of challenge, but no one knows where to start. Mm. You know, there's a, and no one realizes you can hire help or, or it is, you do need a support network. We're hiring coaches for all sorts of things. So we don't actually think, oh, I need someone to help get me started on organizing because it's, you know, it hasn't been what we've done in the past. So it's a bit of a new kind of, I'd say a new coach, or I call myself a life biz organizer. It's, mm. it's a new term. But again, once you, once you just talk to people and say, wow, this is your challenge. What if we could, you know, help you do this to save X amount of time or help you do this so you can eliminate this task or even in the mornings for women, you know, get your closet more organized so you can save this much time and feel less stressed. It's a huge, um, it's a huge lift for them. And I think it gets them motivated to continue organizing. Mm, mm. So getting started, I'd say, is the biggest challenge for everyone. Do you find that you get opportunities to work with people who need it the most, but they're the ones that resist the process the most? Or are most people by the time they call you ready for it? Do you know what I'm asking? Do you get yeah. that note, that rub yeah. in there? You know, and it's a, it's interesting because um, a lot of the, the business owners that I worked with or the larger corporations, they say, okay, I'd like you to come in and organize um, you know, a process or, you know, the, you know, whether it be a software or the sales team or the organizational structure, or I'm starting a new branch, I need to a distribution model. So they look at a purely business and they say, what about your organizational habits? And they say, well, I don't want to focus on that. So it's, <laughs> it's quite interesting. <laughs> and then, you know, we get to know each other and we have, we, we, I try to make it a bit more fun and say, you know, we could, we could do a little bit here on, on your organizational structure. And, you know, even, just little little habits that could make you more efficient and you could spend more time doing this. And it, it's how you structure it. But again, um, a lot of people say, oh, I only need it for my business. Don't worry about my personal life. That's right. what I'm, I find a lot. Yes. Okay. So they, they're, they're missing it. In other words, it sounds like to me that it actually is possible to organize their business, especially if we're talking about processes and structures and systems in their business and not address the personal, but what you like to help people understand, correct me if I'm getting this right, is that if they carry it to the personal, it's going to be even more effective all the way through. Is that what you're describing? Exactly. You said it um, better than I could have said it. That was, <laughs> that's exactly what I meant. And oftentimes it's getting to know them and, and if they see an increase in productivity in their staff, why not themselves? Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I love it. Very, very cool. I noticed on your Facebook page, you had a quote that I think my buddies out there are going to like. It says, a woman with organizing skills can run a construction company without ever picking up a hammer and a nail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's on the back of my book as well so um it's interesting because I worked in the construction industry for 10 years I grew up on a dairy farm I had so I have a lot of those in a, in a small town so I have a lot of those um kind of in, industrial experiences mm. and for myself even when I when I ran a construction company I knew the processes but I you know you can manage it and organizing it w without even physically doing the work and and um I think it's important to understand it but again, you need to focus your business on where you're the best at and your skills. And so that's why I put that quote in there. That's good. And I should say that the quote is from Warren Farrell, that we're, I'm yeah. implied that it was yours and that's not necessarily fair to Warren. <laughs> yeah. exactly. If he's listening, yeah. We don't right? Know. We don't know, but he might. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, okay. So I, that's an interesting thing that you just said in there though. And I want to just pick that out is sometimes being organized and the value in having outside 
eyes look at our business is that maybe it could be that our company has pretty good structure. It could be that our company has pretty good processes, but we're not recognizing that we are maybe responsible for a set of tasks or a part of that process. That's not our best use of our time. And so maybe your systems are pretty good, but your team is not well structured. That's a whole separate thing, right, Jane? Oh, completely separate. And um, I'm, I would actually, in that case, I would actually bring in help as well, because um, I, I'm, I'd say I'm good at time management and, and help in creating efficiency and setting up the teams. But I'd also bring in, you know, extra help on that matter for, let's say, time management gurus or um, whatever else is needed on specific projects. Right, 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 right. Interesting. Yeah. No, my cousin is an expert at that, at analyzing your team and coming back to you as the the CEO or the principal and saying, all right, we're going to play a little chess with your people here. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. People are not exactly. in their zone of genius. Let's reorganize this, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's a, it's an interesting skill set. Okay. So, all right. So what else do we want to say? I mean, now we have interior designers that are, my intention with this is that if somebody is running their own design firm right now and feeling a little strung out or feeling scattered is to understand that a, Sometimes you should start with your space, take a look around, B, definitely go to your business, look at your systems and just bite the bullet, put the time aside and, you know, for once and for all, sit down and create a system that isn't just in your own head, right? Um, yep. But see that these things, A, will benefit your business, but you could take a little bit this to your work, to your clients. Not that we're going to necessarily say, hey, become organizers or whatever, but it does affect everything when you come out of the gate feeling like a superpower, right? I, I, I've got my life locked down, I've got my business locked down, and now I can attack this project with a clean, clear head. It is, right? Do you agree? Yeah, no, totally agree. And and for interior designers, I respect their work so much. My mom is an architect and she always uh, refers to interior, uh, interior designers because that's their skill, that's their passion, that's their, their trade, right? They they understand the process, the um, inside structure of a, of a house or um, a commercial building. So it's a, it's, you know, I, I would almost say to them as well, it's um, for themselves, it's organizing their own business and, and their own marketing and their own um their own clientele, but I'm sure that they, they see so many different people, right. And personalities and houses and, and from hoarders to probably mm -hmm. perfectly organized people. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that they have some kind of challenges related to getting their clients a bit organized and also just getting their clients on the right track. A lot of clients might not know what they want. So honing in on, you know, their priorities, their lifestyle, you know, do they need X amount of garage space and bins to, to store stuff or do they need to get rid of stuff? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where um, I'm sure an interior designer has a lot of challenges. Um, I can't speak directly to it, but right. um, that's what I would assume. I feel like that. I feel like that what you do has a, a particular challenge or struggle because I feel like oh, there's a moment ago when I asked the question. I'm going to sort of rephrase it and come back to it again. Is it seems to me that there is there's a disconnect. Like in other words, sometimes. Not every person, right? But so often if you're that unorganized and you say you want to be organized, there seems to be a, a resistance to, well, I couldn't, I need that in that spot. Well, I couldn't and I need that in that spot. No, I can't throw away those 4,000 magazines because one day mm -hmm. I might want to look at the 15th page. So, yep. you know, how do you break through how do you have those conversations and what would you say to somebody listening who maybe sees or hears him or herself in that, that is legitimately struggling with getting their business and their systems and their, their design firm organized, but is saying, yeah, but. Yep. And I feel like we all say that myself included, and it's um, going back to items and possessions and, how much stuff we have, that's always a challenge because there's memories in there. And mm. um, it, it always relates, again, back to your life, how much, you know, even your space you have. And, and you know, if you're living in a small apartment, you physically can't keep those 4,000 magazines. How do you start to get rid of those, right? So it's, mm. it's that's where you, a one-on-one -on -one coaching session is probably the best and mm -hmm. some kind of, some kind of help to get over that to the next level and say, what what of these magazines bring me joy? When will I look at them? When is the last time? 
can they bring joy to somebody else, right? Mm-hmm. Or can I yeah. sell them? So, so that's what I, with physical things, say, okay, maybe I, I always have bins in my house that are labeled donate, consign, because I like to sell things and make money and then use it for reinvest in my business. So how can you look at things in a different perspective? And for systems and processes, it's the same thing. How can I, how can my system make me more effective, save me time? So maybe there's a but in there, oh, but it works. However, you can say, oh, but could I, could I have 10 more minutes to talk to one more client every day? Hmm. So there's that, you know, what if I could get it more organized and what would it bring me? So I like that you try and encourage them to see the other side of it, see through it. So I know that you are feeling like and and attached to these magazines and they're in your mind, they're sentimental, they're bringing you joy. You think I might need them someday, but you ask them to take a look and say, who else might be helped by these? And you tap into that aspirational part of our nature. And the same is what you said uh, as far as if I had this space more organized, maybe that would allow me 10 minutes more a day to have a new conversation with a potential client. So instead of helping, instead of letting us sit in our space, you ask us to look to the future to motivate us to make a move. Exactly. And, and the, the, the things item is a, is a simpler one, like you mentioned, because it's, um, we can, we can use it for, we can repurpose it quite easily, mm. but your system and your process and your business, you really need to dig deep and maybe do a little bit of exercises on goals and priorities and, and even where you're spending your time to kind of, um, relook at that and say, you know what there, and, and come to the realization yourself as a client, because, we can we can promote it all we want, but unless we get the client to really say, actually, I could save an extra hour, or I could mm-hmm. be more efficient if I outsource this. Mm-hmm. So it it really um, has to come from their realization. How do you encourage people to stay the path? If somebody is not naturally inclined to do this, and maybe they're motivated to look for the change and motivated to institute the changes, but if it's not their nature, how do you not only end up in six months with the crazy closet again, but six months not following the systems that you've helped them design? What do you do in that? Do you find people slipping back to their old ways. I'm sure there's both kinds, people that embrace it, love it, never look back. But what, what happens? What can you say to somebody who maybe has been through an organization process, whether it's their business or their closet, you know, their things or items and has slipped back to their old ways? Yeah. No, I might sound repetitive, but I'll, I'll say it again because it has to fit their lifestyle. And Mm. for me, it's become just an an organic part of my routine. Of course, I love it. And I I could reorganize (laughs) everything every day. And I don't know why everyone doesn't want to do that, but I understand. (laughs) (laughs) You people are all crazy. This is fun. (laughs) (laughs) But I've learned that I'm the, I'm the kind of the 1% of the population that loves this and 99% don't. So, um, I really have to work with 99% of people who don't love organizing. So for myself, it's it's making it fun or listening to their kind of clues on what they enjoy or what they somehow, you know, and it might not look perfect or be perfect for, for my eyes, but for them it fits and they'll be able to sustain it. Okay. So, um, yeah, bringing that fun into it and really honing in on, on – um, the key benefits they're looking for. Again, it's that it's that component trying to keep the benefits in front of them and the the, yes. the, the inspirational and aspirational aspects of being accomplished in this. Okay. Exactly, okay. and starting small. I would say to, they say, "Oh, I want to do this and this and this." Let's start even with one room, like ten minutes a day, and and work our way up. Okay, you know, uh, are you familiar with Gretchen Rubin? She's a writer and she's a, she does, he wrote the book, The Happiness Project and Better Than Before. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, right? Have, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And she has one of her happiness, you know, rules is just spend 10 minutes a day picking up, like before you go to bed in the evening, just give a look to the, you know, the room that you spend the most time in or the kitchen and just 10 minutes. And I love that because then you wake up and it's like, ah, everything's nice and neat and clean and organized and I can start working and getting going with my day. So yeah, yeah, that's it. It's a, it's, it's a, I always also equate everything to fitness and to exercise. It's sort of like you can decide that I'm going to run five miles a day, but if I have a day, I can't do it. And I, 
I just like, I have this rule where I'm on the telephone. I have to be walking up and down my stairs from the third floor to the first floor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, okay, it's not a three mile run, but we're moving. And that's that 10 minute to me, that's the equivalent of that 10 minutes of just clean up one room for 10 minutes. So it's yep. chunks, the chunks pay off. I think that's really what I'm trying to express is that little, little bits do make a difference. You agree oh, with I that? I totally agree. And it's, um, and going back to your question, um, a few minutes ago about the biggest challenges for people, it's where to get started. So starting mm. them small, like you said, 10 minutes a day, I'm sure with exercise, um, personal trainers and whatnot have a similar starting small approach. Right, <laughs> they don't right. just go into uh, a full two hour workout with somebody. So it's, uh, it's probably very similar. Right, right, right. I love it. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit here. You gave me permission to bring this conversation up in our off air conversation before the show. You mentioned how you had just in the last several months started a new initiative that you decided that you were going to truly market your business outside of your um, circle of influence, that you were going to put yourself out there, that you were going to work with a PR firm, and that you were actively going to market your company. And you said to me how scary that was for you to do that. I don't know because I stopped the conversation. I want to hear it on air. I don't know if it's still scary, but I'm curious about what how because I'm sure that will be a helpful conversation. Tell us about why it was scary for you and what you went through or going through. I, yeah, no. And I'm, I'm to answer your question, I'm still scared every day and um, relating back to interior design businesses. And if they're just starting or, uh, you know, well on a mature business, I'm sure there's so many moments where they, they're going to feel for me as well, <laughs> because, um, you know, I left, I had been working what I thought, you know, in a, in a large company, moved all over, kind of uh, very corporate roles. And then in August, I had left and said, okay, I'm going to start my own business. And I focused it really on consulting within my network. I didn't market myself because I was, I was scared. For me, social media was something um, I didn't do when I worked. And I thought, okay, it's just for posting now and then. I was very, I had this apprehension, even changing my LinkedIn status to let people know that I had left the corporate world was scary. Mm. So um, I actually hired a coach this past January and I worked with her for two months. She was a personal branding coach and, you know, I knew how to do it. I knew the content. I had so much, I have so much content and information to provide people and, 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 you know, I should be sharing it with the world, but I was that scaredness of getting, putting myself out there is what she helped me get over. So, um, right now I'm still, you know, every day I struggle. I think, okay, I have it in my calendar. I have to work on my social media. I have to do this, but it's, it's just that, you know, that fear of whether it be rejection or, oh, she's starting her own business. Oh, what's this? You know, it's, it's curiosity, but getting over that and the, the clients that I have worked with and that have come to me, not through my own network have been so grateful and happy and I have a new network. So, from that, it, it gives you um, reflection that, no, you should be promoting yourself and your business, especially if you have um, something to help people with. Same with interior design. There are so many people who value this service and, and can benefit. So why not market your services? But yeah, every day I'm still scared. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm hearing is, is that it's, it sounds easy to do. Hey, I have a business, hang the shingle, tell the world, put it on social media, but what the struggle was convincing yourself that it was worthwhile telling everybody about. Yeah, worthwhile and that it wasn't, um, you know, I guess I was trained or I thought that in society, okay, you, you work, you become, you know, director, vice president in, in a very corporate role. And I, you know, that's where I went to school for this. And I thought, how am I going to be now transitioning into, although I still work with businesses, more of a, a lifestyle organizer and a business organizer and are people you know, how are they going to perceive this? So it was more of a perception thing, mm -hmm. even though, even though in this role, it's just as professional, just as, you know, I, I actually work more directly and make bigger impacts. Okay. I heard it there. I just heard it. You had a fear that it wouldn't be taken as serious as a legitimate thing as a corporate VP or whatever that now it's like, oh, you do that over there. Is that what you're? Yeah, that was the, um, part of it. A lot of a lot of my, my struggles was around that because I had, you know, that's what I thought I should be the path that I was on. And, but really I wasn't using my full potential, my passion and what I'm good at is organizing people and their businesses. Mm -hmm. And, 
when I when I saw the benefit, I realized this is actually something that people need more than um, than myself in a in working for a company. So we could have a designer friend of ours sitting out there that is working a corporate position or any kind of position and thinking that A, I've always wanted to be an interior designer or B, is side hustling as a designer and having some of those same struggles. If this is really my passion, why am I not doing it? Am I entitled to do it? Am I, is it okay for me to make this switch and this pivot? And your experience is that you are, are you happier now? Do you feel more fulfilled now? What would you say? You're almost a year. So you, you started your business August, 2017. We're recording June, 2018. Tell us what's your hindsight on having made that move. Yeah, a hundred (laughs) percent happier. And (laughs) and I have, um, not just, not just happier in my, I I was always a happy person Mm. and fulfilled, but it's, it's that, um, utilizing your time to make the most out of it. And now I have so much more time. I also have, um, I'm also working with this tech startup with some, um, some of my former colleagues in the business as well. And I'm helping to start this and to put the processes in place. And, and before you would never really have the time to, to do this because you couldn't have, let's say two businesses, um, no way working. Mm, (laughs) So now I find I really do, uh, I use my skills. I plan efficiently. I value my time more. So if there's a meeting that I don't think will bring any value to that person or myself, I don't have it. So it's really that ability to manage your own time and manage it effectively will bring you more, more happiness and you're helping more people. So for that, um, potential interior designer, maybe who's doing it as a side hustle and thinking, it can be it can be something larger if it can be anything you can make of it. Mm-hmm. I just heard in there too, you have the same experience yourself that you encourage your clients to have. When you we talked about having them hang on to the aspirational of, effect of it of what their process that is accomplishing, and I just heard it in there. You said now I can help more people. I'm making a better use of my time, my life, my abilities because I'm really making a change in their life. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It is. It's um and and I think we all have that power and we all have a passion for something, right? So it's uh and and to put it to better use and to be able to to really focus on that, your strengths, uh, will bring a lot of good in the world, I think. Tell me about the transition from going to corporate to opening last August. Did you plan it out financially? Did you work with a coach then to push you off the ledge or actually making the transition and opening the business was the easier part than three or four or five or six months later recognizing, oh, I have to go push myself out of my box and tell people about it. Were they both difficult or was one easier than the other for you? No, they were both very difficult, (laughs) but, um, I I got a, a, a contract with a kind of a construction related firm quite early on and that um but again it was still it was it felt a bit corporate still so um that's why in January I said okay I'm going to really you know make a change and and focus and put 100% of my effort into marketing myself my business and I realized having that my I didn't have a system myself then so putting a system in place huh. freed up a lot time. Yep. Showing what needed to be done. And that gave me time to also work on this other tech business as well. So, uh, you know, having those skills to put my own system in place. Interesting. I love it. I love it. So it's almost sounds like you just drew a line in the sand in January. Like that's it. I did. It's enough. I did. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I read, um, I, you know, I read a lot of books over the Christmas holidays and, um, you know, a lot of motivational books like Gabby Bernstein, and um, Jen Sincero, those kind of books on your passion and how to make it your business. And, and those kind of helped me realize that um, there is something more that I can do to, to help people and organizations make more money, be happier, have more time. Mm-hmm. You had to tap into what you could do that would be of better benefit. And you realized that you had value to do it. Exactly. I love it. Yeah, but it's, I, it's I, tough. I, <laughs> right. And that's right. It's hmm. it's one thing to say, um, but we have to say it. We have to say it to encourage others to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And and um, a friend of mine actually just started her own interior design business in Kelowna, Canada uh, a few months ago. And she was 
you know, we were talking a few months ago and she's like, oh, I'm so nervous and I have to do this. And she was picking my brain and just helping her get over those fears too is what I needed to get over my fears. Mm, right, right, right. I love it. And then ultimately the coach, can you think of something or a moment, an experience, a sentence, a conversation that the coach helped you with a light bulb moment? Yeah. She was like, Jane, you wrote a book. You have a lot of content to share. <laughs> and Why like, do I have to point like, this out to you? Right. <laughs> well, you know, I thought I do. She's like people, you know, giving content is, is giving people advice and in, in a way that on, on social media or that is a free kind of tips that you're giving to help people. And why aren't you doing that? So it was right. like, you're right. Why am I not doing that? Right. Instead of feeling mm -hmm. uncomfortable about it, understand the value that you're giving away and that somebody wants it. Exactly. And you know what? It doesn't, the number of followers you have or the number of, that doesn't distinguish anything. It's the, it's the, um, I guess the quality of your content and what you're providing. And if somebody actually, if you can relate to and help those individuals. Right. It's the genuine authenticness of it. Exactly. Yes, I, I have to say, I know to be true that many interior designers underestimate the value that they bring to each of us that do not have the talent that they have. They, they, you know, it is the number one thing that I notice that they, it's easy for them. They're passionate about doing it. And therefore it's hard to really outside look in and say, wow, this is powerful stuff. And that sounds like the same aha that you went through. I have some powerful content to share and it will help people. Exactly. And, and uh, my parents are from Switzerland and I lived there for, many years. And in that culture, it's, it's a bit different than North America because the trades and the skills that we learn are very highly valued. Like mm. an interior designer in, in Europe is, you know, we, we, that's a natural thing. You would hire an interior designer. You wouldn't think twice to do it yourself. Where here it's a, we are a do it yourself nation. <laughs> where, right. Where, the nation itself yeah. was brought you as design, you know, just, uh, birthed on, we're going to do it ourselves. Thanks England. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But really the, you know, the interior design skills, and I see this from my mother as well, who's an architect who will design a beautiful home on the outside, but then she'll be like, Oh, but they did it themselves on the inside and it just devalues the entire home. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that we need to value all skills and all, um, what we learned and what we're, our passion is and, and bring those into our lives. So for an interior designer, I would say that is, you should be marketing that. And, and really it's tough because I, I do know it's, it's an industry where people just like organizing, <laughs> do it themselves. <laughs> but we have to, I guess, go that step beyond and, and, um, prove ourselves a bit more and on how on the benefits. And if they go to Europe, they'll understand, like if they go to Switzerland, they might have a different, they might see a different perspective because there it's, it's really, you would never do anything yourself. You would hire a professional. Right. It's, as you said, it's a, it's a profession. It's something that takes a lot of skill and um, innate talent and skill to yeah. master and do. And that's, that's what I'm saying all the time to the designers that I talk to. Like, it seems easy to you, but that's because you know how to do it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the rest of yeah. us are like, where, where does that little table go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and they're actually creating a benefit for their in everyday lives for mm. consumers because your home is where you are or your business if they're doing uh, commercial mm -hmm. is where they spend almost sometimes a hundred percent of their time. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the most important um, benefits they can help people with. So for myself too, I say organizing is you're doing it constantly, your system in your life and your business. So that should be where you focus a lot of your, a lot of your time and, and helping those people. I love it. I think it's awesome. I think it, it's so um, valuable the way you connect both the uh, organizing of items, as you call it, to the organizing of your systems to, and you know, the, by, by virtue organizing your life and both your personal and your business life. I think it's, it's terrific. And I really thank you for not only sharing your expertise with us, but also sharing your experience with us of the fears that surrounded with opening your own business. And then the second hurdle of being able to confidently say, I have this business and I'm good at what I do. <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> it's awesome. It's
Yeah, no, it's a, I hope I can inspire somebody else listening. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm hundred percent sure of it. So here's the thing. The book is called, um, organizing for your lifestyle and we can get the book on Amazon by searching Jane Stoller. It's S to S T O L L E R. You can also go to Jane Is that correct? Or no, it's, it's a, tell me the URL. Yep. It's organizing for your lifestyle.com is the, um, the book URL. Okay. Okay. And then your website where you have other information is janestoller.com. No, still organizing for your lifestyle.com. Okay. Yeah. Way, way to go, Luann. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My, organizing my for, okay. Yeah. My, my Instagram is organized Jane Stoller. Okay. 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 Organize. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's good. I'm glad you pointed that out. Cause that's where we are all hanging out is on Instagram mostly. So, um, that's awesome. All righty. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being, being honest and truthful and vulnerable with us on your particular journey. And thanks for inspiring us to clean out our closet and clean up our systems. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I hope it helps. Yeah, I really do. And thanks for having me. You're welcome. So the biggest lesson here, I have to say, I think is that when you get yourself, your home, your office, and your business in order, organize it and run it like a ship, things just get a little bit easier. And the thing about businesses is that it's not easy. And believe me, I hate to say this to you, but I don't think it's ever easy even after all these years with the highly organized business that we have, I don't think I'd ever use the word easy in describing being self-employed. It just goes with the territory. But the thing is that with some planning and some thought and some help and some action, you can improve it and you can be happy and you can be profitable. So if you need somebody like Jane, uh, and I want to say, I forgot to mention during the show and highlight this, that she works virtually with her clients as well, not just locally, right? Okay. So if you need somebody like Jane, then don't hesitate, reach out to her. Or if you need the help from me and my team, reach out, don't hesitate. The thing is don't delay and don't think you have to do it alone. All right. There are resources and people here to help you. And I'll just mention resources like our terrific sponsors have to just put it in there again. Okay. Because there are a lot of people and companies here ready and willing and able to help you. So we have the Power Talk Friday tour sponsors for Las Vegas are My Doma Studio, the IWCE International Window Covering Expo, Revel Woods and Designer Inc. And of course, we have our regular show sponsors. We have Kravit, where don't forget, they can help you by getting 10% off any one fabric Cravit fabric trim or wallpaper purchase at checkout. Use the code AWDB10. You have My Doma Studio, where the same thing, they can help you manage your projects, help you create mood boards, help you create packages that you can sell while you're sleeping. And you can do that at mydomastudio.com slash a well designed business. And we have Camp Chroma. And you can find Camp Chroma at campchroma.com. All right. Now, I just want to say, what is your takeaway today? What is the action you will take today? Will you decide that today is the day that you join Camp Chroma and become an expert color strategist? Is today the day you finally look at my Doma studio after hearing me talk about it for two and a half years and see how it works? Or will you look into Designer Inc. or Revel Woods and see how they can help you in your interior design firm? Okay, or is today the day that you decide to join me in Las Vegas on July 28th, 2018. I hope so. Have an excellent day and decide, decide today to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, 
Luann and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at LuannNigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.